Uh, I'm going to go back to the press conference yesterday. Uh, we started off talking about it at the beginning of the programme. Boris Johnson, Chris Whitty, Patrick Balance. Can you tell us why the singer and rapper Nicki Minaj was mentioned um, at the same Covid press conference uh, with Boris Johnson? Yeah, so this is something that we're definitely not expecting to be brought up yesterday at the press conference. But it's a tweet that Nicki Minaj put out, I think it was on Monday evening, saying that her cousin in Trinidad wasn't going to get the vaccine because one of his friends had become impotent after having it. And Boris Johnson and Chris Whitty were asked about this yesterday. It was a good question. It was something different to ask them about. It and that they was. were quite... They were quite clear in their criticism. I think Chris Whitty said that what she'd said was untrue and ridiculous. Boris Johnson said that he wasn't so familiar with the work of Nicki Minaj, but he preferred to listen to Nikki Kanani, uh, part of the NHS, who has been one of the people who has spoken at Number 10 briefings mm. in the past. And obviously you think that the issue might stop there. But Nicki Minaj saw the tweets about what had happened at the press conference and was quite quick to come out. She accused Chris Whitty and Boris Johnson of a diss against her and then recorded some quite bizarre audio message to Boris Johnson where she put on a British accent and started talking about how she went to Oxford and went to school with Margaret Thatcher. And she wasn't done then. Then she oh. started coming for Laura Koonsberg and saying, go away, Dumbo, to her, simply because she quote tweeted one of Nicki Minaj's tweets and said, 2021, everyone. Right, let's leave that just to one side for a moment because we're joined by the BBC specialist disinformation reporter Mariana Spring. Um, Mariana, we've heard in very colourful terms there from John about Nicki Minaj's tweets, but this kind of misinformation, I think we would say, isn't just limited to celebrities on Twitter, is it? Can you give us an idea of the scale of the problem? It definitely isn't, and we've seen an increase in uh, anti-vaccine uh, disinformation and conspiracies on social media throughout the pandemic. Um, it's proved to be a real problem, um, particularly targeting younger audiences who use social media much more, whether that's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and a celebrity like Nicki Minaj tweeting something as she did um, is likely to influence and affect their views on the jab. Um, we've seen claims about infertility spread uh, <laughs> frequently throughout the pandemic. Um, and th these kinds of conspiracies can be very emotive, but they're contrary to what health authorities are saying, that there's currently no evidence that COVID jabs affect fertility or male fertility in the case of Nicki Minaj's story about her cousin. Um, and I think this tells us a bit about how this ecosystem works. Someone can say something that is unsubstantiated. Who is this cousin? Where are they? What's actually happened here? Mm. Um, but because it's a motive, because it incites a reaction, it's shared far and wide. People are talking about it. Um, and it might just put someone off getting the jab who was about to go and have theirs. I mean, do you think we should be more concerned Concerned, particularly for 12 to 15 year olds who are being offered uh, the vaccine shortly um, if this is quite prevalent will they be influenced by it I think that 12 to 15 year olds are an age group where they will have been exposed to a lot of disinformation about vaccines on social media. We've seen emotive personal stories alleging harm caused by the vaccine, um, but without the evidence um, that are worlds apart from uh, medical and political debates we might be having, whether that's about vaccine side effects or about whether 12 to 15 year olds um, should be offered the vaccine, whether they should be offered elsewhere in the first place. Um, and we've seen how anti-vaccine activists online have really exploited those political debates and those medical discussions um, in a bid to uh, ramp up fear, to get people feeling worried about having the jab. Um, and that's not just happening on social media. Um, we've seen violent rhetoric on social media and increasingly mm. aggressive tactics. There are a number of anti-vaccine activists who tweeted really awful stuff suggesting that Chris Whitty, for example, should be hanged or executed as a consequence of making that decision about offering a jab to 12 to 15 year olds. But offline too, uh, there were incidents involving anti-vax activists um, at schools, one school in Chester where um, there were allegations that anti-vaccine activists were uh, harassing students who were attending the school. And one big worry of experts going forward is that 12 to 15 year olds not only will be bombarded with vaccine disinformation on their social media sites that could lead them to making a misinformed decision or their parents to making a misinformed decision, but actually the offline harm too, that as these tactics become more aggressive, yes. um, what's to stop these protesters turning up at schools across the country and doing this kind of thing? Mariana Spring, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Steve, you are on the Department of Culture, Media, Sports, subcommittee on disinformation. Um, but just broadly, how concerned are you with stories like this and uh, the potential impact on vaccine uptake? 
Exact key, exactly what you said. I'm concerned about stories yes. like this. So let's go back to the start of the programme when we were talking about the, the winter plan and about the threats going forward. This is not about people who've been vaccinated. This is about people who haven't been vaccinated. So the challenge, the first line of defence, is to get them vaccinated. Anything that then disincentivizes that is not helpful. I too am not particularly familiar with the work of, of Nicki Minaj mm. and uh, and a friend of her cousin who who's apparently impotent and also swollen boys. Yes, yep, thank you. Um, I think we've and, had and quite so, enough of Nicki so, Minaj. So the point, the point being is that I'm actually quite surprised that Chris chose to mention this at the press conference because she's in every newspaper today. Loads of people now will have accessed her tweet. I don't think it's really helpful. Uh, we, we don't t have too much to say about the world of Nicki Minaj and it's probably best if she stays out of politics. Can I just put something specific? though to you Clive there, there is one thing uh, about people who are anti-vaccination but there is genuine concern from some parents about whether 12, 12 to 15 year olds should be vaccinated their 12 to 15 year olds should be vaccinated because we know ourselves that the health experts have said that the direct benefit is still marginal so I mean that that's not sort of out of this so, world is it so no and I think the the key thing here how to encourage people to take vaccine vaccine hesitancy um, the, the research shows that the way that you reduce that is by encouraging people by talking about the benefits to community, the benefits to family and friends, to vulnerable people, rather than taking a big stick. Um, and I think that also makes people less susceptible to disinformation, which I, 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 I think um, we were talking about Nicki Minaj. I think the other, I'm going to make a political point here, and, and I think you well, know one, you of the reasons why, one of the reasons why <laughs> I think uh, young people um, are it's susceptible, if you want. Many people are susceptible. Young people we're talking about at the moment is because if you look about the... the you think about the, the contract, the mm. civic contract, the public contract that they have with politicians, the political class, with this government. You know, we know that two-thirds of young people have lost their job, under 25 have lost their job in the pandemic. They're going to go into hundreds of thousands of pounds of debt um, through um, from going to university. Uh, Generation rent, you know, increasing numbers being right. evicted, the collapse of, of, mm. of any confidence that the climate mm. crisis is being dealt with. And you can understand why they have lost faith in people, the political class, well, telling them that you need to do A, B and C. Well, on the trust yeah. issue then, in terms I'm of... I'm not sure what this has got to do with generation rent, but I said in the House of Commons when we talked about the 12 to 15 uh, vaccinations the other night is that parents, like me, with, with a teenage daughter, will have lots of questions before mm. we're going to go mm. forward to take this vaccination. The key to this is information, not just a leaflet, not just telling them that the MHRA is the best regulator in the world, which it is, but they're going to need information. They're going to want to have conversations with their family doctors. The government needs to make sure that family doctors are in a position to be able to do that because right now access to GPs and family doctors is proving challenging for many of my constituents. Are you sceptical then about the 12 to 15 year old? I am sceptical yeah. about it, yes, and I'm very sceptical about the idea that it's going to set up an argument between parents and young people. Frankly, we have enough of them in my house without about this. Not just yours.